the seventh scroll, I am Falconetti. It was a lament that gathered volume in educated quarters in the twilight years of 20th century England. How, wondered those who fancied themselves still capable of wondering, had the nation of Darwin and Newton, Shakespeare and Chaucer, Lawrence and Barda, Payne and Pankhurst, Cook and Shackleton become the nation of Chris Evans? <laughs> Few things terrify an unsteady imperial ruler like a popular local demagogue. General Cahill has little in common with the wine-sipping middle classes of his damn fiefdom, but he shares their mistaken belief that this apparently lightest of entertainers is no more than a preeny ginger nitwit, as disposable as he is irritating. In order to assert his authority and perhaps to curry some favour with that minority of England's population who still believe their people capable of being more than an indentured studio audience, General Cahill orders the deeply misunderstood celebrity to be burnt at the stake. You cannot, Cahill reasons like many wise rulers before him, make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. And you cannot, Cahill sighs as the Morris men hoist their torches, reconstruct a culture without incinerating a few disc jockeys. <laughs> the condemned man's last testament, one of the more significant sections of the scrolls, demonstrates the depth of Cahill's error. With nothing to lose, Evan submits himself nobly and heroically to his fate, a vessel of our frailties dying not for our sins, because barely anybody can be bothered to sin anymore, but for something much more pernicious and corrosive, our amusement. Pending a decent interval and the attendant bureaucratic formalities, Evans will be elevated to the sainthood that is the very least he is due. In the meantime, you would think that an Irishman would know better than to go around creating martyrs. But like so many important suzerains before him, Cattle has doomed himself to be haunted by a ghost of his own creation. <laughs> And I shed no tears for the 